Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. Um, had a couple questions from people in the comments in regards to a few things. Um, one was the uh, Illuminati model that I use. So yeah, the model is not available on Civet AI anymore. Unfortunately, there is another one there. Somebody, uh, I guess, uh, created a new one using the weights, supposedly the exact same weights as the original and I've tried it, I, you know, I have it, and I have not been able to get it to work the same as the original. And uh, so I've had some people ask if they can get a hold of it. Uh, I make no claim, I don't know what the legal responsibilities are around that, uh, but I went ahead and added that into the uh, Google Share. So it is there. If there are problems, you know, I'll deal with that as it comes. So uh, don't worry about that. Uh, a couple other things. So somebody did ask about what's the difference between batch size and batch count. Uh, <laughs> when I first started, I was I, I was kind of the same opinion. I'm like, what the heck is the difference here? So um, batch size sets the number of simultaneous images that you are rendering at the exact same moment. And um, your ability to do this, like I've got my I've customized my configuration files to only allow me to scroll it all the way up to four, but I think typically it allows you to go up to eight. But that all depends on what your card can handle. Uh, I've got a 12 gigabyte NVIDIA uh, 3080 Ti card, and it allows me to do up to uh, four images uh, at a maximum of, uh, you know, something like 1152 by 647 or 1152 by 768. And within that range, uh, I can do four simultaneous, simultaneous images. Um, if I, if I do any other resolution, like if I decide to, let's say we go up to by 50% to 1728 by 970, I may only be able to do two at a time. So you get the idea. It really depends on the amount of memory in your card, the resolution you're trying to render at. And honestly, you're not rendering at those resolutions initially anyway, unless you're just upscaling something. So um, the other part of that, let me, uh, Get rid of that. Uh, let's see where are we here? Oh, yeah. Um, is the batch count? So batch count is the number of. Sorry, my phone's going off here. Uh, the batch count is the number of batch sizes that get rendered. So if I set this to four, and then set this to say four as well, what that's going to do is it's going to render four batches of these four simultaneous images, which means it's going to give you a total of 16 images. A lot of people, because they're working with low memory cards, um, will typically set this to one, and then they'll use this to generate multiple images, and then, which is fine. That's totally fine if, if that's what you want to do, um, especially if you don't have the VRAM to support rendering multiple images. And it does slow it down. Like when I'm rendering four images, it obviously takes longer to render. Um, so that's up. It's kind of a personal preference. I like rendering four, and, and here's the reason. The reason why is because um, I like seeing all four images being rendered at the same time. Um, that way, I get an idea if I just need to cancel the render and move on to something else. Um, and then if I find something I, I uh, like, say a prompt I really like, and the, the first four look great, I'll, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll go up here and up this to something else and just let it run and render a whole ton of images. I did that a while ago when I was generating uh, some coloring book pages. Uh, I had created a custom prompt that allowed me to create some really beautiful uh, uh, coloring book pages. And uh, I would set this to four, and I'd blow this all the way up to like 20 and just generate a whole ton of them. So. Uh, that's the batch count versus batch size. So batch size, simultaneous pictures being rendered, batch count is the number of those being rendered over time. Okay. Uh, something uh, somebody else kind of brought up is the sampling method. So a lot of people use Euler A. Uh, I, I think I've talked a little bit about this in the other ones. Um, most people, you're, you're not going to find a lot of difference between them. It really depends on what you want. Uh, Euler A will, will give you images that are, uh, how do I put this, not as granular, um, end up having a little bit more of a painted effect when you zoom in on them. Uh, as where like the DPM uh, sampling methods will be a little more granular. 
I, this, I'm not sure exactly, I'd say pixelated, but it's not quite that. It's almost like there's more detail. Uh, they're good for realism. Like if you want to do something that's a little more realistic, you want to choose one of these, experiment with them, and kind of figure out which one works best for you based on the model you're using. I have mine defaulted to DPM++ SDE Karas uh, just because it's, it works really well for a lot of the images I do and it gets the, a lot of detail in there. Um, so I, another person asked about, um, oh, when with the sampling method, yes, that does translate across to the image to image. So when I port my images over to image to image, um, I do change this one to the same one because when upscaling and doing various other things, it works really well in adding the detail into those images. Okay, so aspect ratio helper. Uh, some people have asked me about that, which is this extension right here. Um, and they were curious, like, how are you getting the drop down menu over here that allows me to quickly switch between aspect ratios? So, and uh, just a quick, quick overview. So, aspect ratio helper, just a bunch of presets that you can have set up where you can set, like, say, um, I want to start working with images that have a width of 1525. I can set that and then just set 16 by 9. And what that does is it sets it to the maximum. Uh, so we'll scale to maximum on that. So 1525, and then you select your aspect ratio. So I say 4 by 3, uh, we'll scale to maximum, then it does 1525 by 11, 1144, which is a 4 by 3. Same with 16 by 9. Do that, scale to maximum, it'll give me a, a 16 by 9. These are great for if you're going to be printing stuff, because a lot of stuff has standard image sizes. So to enable this function up here, I don't think it's on by default. Uh, you need to go to your settings. After you've installed the extension, you go to your settings and then they're down here on the left, there's an option that says aspect ratio helper. And you'll wanna make sure that enable JavaScript aspect ratio controls is enabled. And then uh, there should be a, uh, where is it, expand according to this, no. oh, so the JavaScript selection method, sorry. You want to select aspect ratios drop down. There's one that says options buttons, option button, which I think gives you a button instead of a drop down, but I really like the but or the drop down. And you can actually come in here and create your own custom aspect ratios too. If you want to see something different, go ahead and put it in here. Um, and it gives you that ability. You can even change the buttons that allow you to uh, increase or decrease the resolution. These are actually pretty handy um, if you're working with. Uh, uh, especially the upscale, if you're doing, depending on your upscaling method, you can just quickly say, oh, I want to increase the resolution by 50% and re-render at that size, uh, adding detail to the image. So um, I'll, I'll do another video on the, on the multiple ways of upscaling. There's at least four primary ways of upscaling that I know of. We'll go through that. But anyway, yeah, so the uh, aspect ratio helper has been a great extension to have, especially this little button. Uh, allows you to set something like let's say 1150, oops, 1152, um, and we want it to be 16 by 9. Okay, so it sets at that, but let's say we want to lock that in. So we've got the 16 by 9 ratio set, uh, and which I think locks it automatically. So if we move this, it keeps that 16 by 9 ratio. You see how it moves the height bar. So it always keeps the 16 by 9. Now, let's say you're working with a custom resolution. So let's turn this off. Let's say we're setting it to, some, I don't know, something random thing, like 1280 by 1024, right? Um, we can actually lock that. I don't know if that's a standard aspect ratio. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but let's go here and lock that. And that way we can work within that specific ratio all the time. Great little thing. And then you have this button, which is part of uh, Stable Diffusion, which allows you to swap that uh, around so that it changes places which one is the locked uh, uh, perspective. So whether it's the height or width. And then it, if you notice, it also changes all these too. So instead of 16 by nine, it now knows that this is the primary. So it's now, we can change it to nine by 16. So it, it'll do the vertical stuff too. Uh, I hope that was helpful, uh, and I hope you like and subscribe, and uh, uh, look out for more of these uh, quick tip tutorials.